All right, everybody, we're going to get started in about one more minute. It's 10 o'clock. A few more people joining, I can see. Give us a few seconds. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Get this all set up. Get the chat open. All right, everybody, I'd like to start on time because I know your time is very valuable, so we are going to get going. <clears throat> Today we're talking about inspections in the contract, material, uh, cosmetic defects versus um, defective items. I'm very excited to uh, put this presentation together. Uh, we're going to go in pretty detailed into the contract inspection uh, requirements in terms of what is defective versus what is cosmetic. Um, for those of you that have been on my presentations before, you can uh, unmute yourself, you, know, you can unmute yourself or just type your message into the chat. I'm monitoring the chat. And um, uh, I can see most of your most of you on the screen. So you can also raise your hand. I can call on you. You don't want to just interrupt. Um, again, home inspections to fix or not to fix. So we are going to get started with a disclaimer because I'm an attorney and the attorneys like disclaimers. Uh, so take a moment to look through this. We're not creating an attorney-client relationship and uh, you cannot rely on this presentation or your interpretation of it for any purposes. If you have any questions, you should give me a call separately, of course, or shout them out on here and uh, we'll get them answered. I like people to know a little bit about who they're dealing with and who's talking to them today. So um, a little bit about my law firm. We help realtors, small business owners, entrepreneurs, buyers, sellers, property managers uh, with all of their real estate and business needs. We have a full service litigation department and we have offices throughout Southwest Florida. A little bit about me. I've been an attorney since 2003. That means I'm doing this 19 years. I specialize in real estate law, and I'm a member of the Neighbor Legal Resources Committee and the Reptile Section of the Bar's Real Committee, that's the Real Estate Industry Liaison Committee. So I work on the committees that help with the FAR Bar and the Neighbor contracts. I am a recovering politician, so careful. Uh, please excuse any jokes. <laughs> um, diving right into this morning, we're going to look at the inspection provisions. We're going to compare the neighbor and the far bar provisions. Uh, one thing I'll say about that, it was really uh, kind of interesting. They're very similar. They have their differences and we're going to talk about them. But what is defective versus a cosmetic condition? We're going to go into that and basically say what has to be repaired. So um, you know this, the inspection provisions are different depending on which contract you use. And the three things that we really worry about when we're negotiating our inspection provisions are the type of inspections listed in the contract, how long to make, um, I know it's a mistake, how long to do your inspections, and uh, what happens if the seller disputes an inspection report item. Uh, both contracts have default 15 day inspection provisions and um, the for, they have forms in the neighbor version, at least, for uh, negotiating the inspections. So we're going to talk about all of that as we go through this today. So let's dive right into the forms. One thing I want to say as we go into the forms, since we're talking about inspections and defective items and cosmetic items, we're not talking about the as-is contract today. We're talking about the far bar regular contract, the neighbor residential improved property contract. Um, and one thing I'll say about both forms, because these forms are different than the as is, the big difference is the buyer has to take some affirmative action to trigger the inspection uh, process and the possibility of terminating. As you know, under the as is, the buyer can terminate for any reason or no reason. Under the contracts that we're talking about today, the regular contracts, the buyer has to take an affirmative action before they can terminate. 
That is, they have to get inspections, deliver reports to the seller, and the seller then has to come back to them with some action. And that, and that differs between the forms that we're going to get into the differences between neighbor and far bar and what the seller is obligated to do. So right away, you know, uh, the far bar inspections, there are three main inspections that the far bar uh, offers in the, in the contract itself. You get your general, your WDO, that's wood destroying organisms and your permit inspection. Uh, far bar does offer addenda for mold inspections and lead-based paint inspections. Uh, note that Farbar does not have a radon option. So if you really want a radon inspection, uh, which is very popular in the Southwest Florida market, you have to write in some, cu some cu customized language to get your buyer a radon inspection. Um, Interesting things about the Farbar contract, the seller must make the required repairs within 10 days of buyer's written notice or provide estimates of the repairs. This actually was a recent change to the Farbar contract. The seller no longer has to notify the, the buyer. Uh, they can just make the repairs if they're gonna just make the repairs. If they wanna negotiate, if they wanna get their own inspector, if they wanna go through the process with a third inspector chosen by the buyer and seller, to tell what is uh, whose, whose decision is binding on the parties as to what has to be repaired, uh, then the seller has to provide notice. The seller's cost of repairs are by default capped at one and a half percent of the purchase price in the far bar contract. That default, of course, can be changed, and you can use uh, dollars or percent of purchase price to limit the repairs. And then under the far bar contract, remember I said a few minutes ago. The, the parties have to take affirmative actions. Well, if the repairs go over the, the repair limits in the far bar contract, then there are notices that must be given. The seller has to give notice that they are um, uh, willing to make all of the repairs or the buyer has to give notice that they are willing to accept only those repairs that the seller wants to do up to the repair limit, if neither party gives those notices, then the uh, either party may terminate the contract. It's a very interesting uh, scheme they put together in the Farbar contract to make sure that everybody agrees to what the inspections are going to be. Um, and there is a procedure I mentioned, a procedure in the, in the Farbar contract. If the parties don't agree on what needs to be repaired, if they dispute the items that need to be repaired, then both parties agree on a third inspector who then makes a finding as to whether something is defective based on the contract language and that is binding on the parties. Very interesting concept. Um, one other thing that's interesting about the far bar contract, the seller, and this is gonna sound weird when I say this, the seller has to fix certain cosmetic items if the cosmetic item is um, the result of a defective item, perfect example, window is leaking. I had this, I had this conversation yesterday. Window is leaking because a sprinkler is spraying on the window. So they have to fix the leak, fix the sprinkler so it's not spraying on the window, but then the inside of the wall, the damaged drywall has got to be repaired and painted and look nice for closing. Um, let's see here. Who pays for third? The third inspector is paid for by both parties. It's an excellent question, Susie. And um, Nancy, we'll get into exclusions for seller's disclosure in a little while. Okay. So the seller, uh, interesting in the far bar contract, the seller has to replace torn screens, fogged windows, missing roof tiles or shingles. That's a difference from the neighbor contract. And we're talking about that uh, in greater detail, but I wanted to point that out. These are items that have to be fixed in the far bar. They're not always obvious. Um, oops. Before I get into neighbor, does anybody have questions about the far bar inspection? Seeing none, okay. 
So Nabor is a little more broad than the uh, Farbar contract. It has six inspection items that are allowed. You have your systems and equipment, your radon, your lead-based paint, your wood destroying organisms, your mold and your open permits. Um, now systems and equipment, we're gonna get into what is included in that, but it is a very broad definition, including the property and all appliances, equipment, fire sprinklers, irrigation, well, septic, heating, cooling, electrical, plumbing. You don't have to write this down, it's in the contract. But uh, mechanical components, the roof, and it's got standards for each one of those items in the contract, uh, free from leakage, things like that. We're gonna talk about all that. The neighbor inspections, the seller is limited to paying for the fair market value of the items as if it were in working condition. What does that mean? That means that the seller does not have to necessarily replace something just because it's old, ugly, doesn't work right. If they can fix that 12 year old air conditioner or 15 year old air conditioner to make it blow cold air prior to closing, that's all the seller has to do. If the air conditioning uh, putters out and just doesn't work the day after closing, that's the buyer's problem. And that happens a lot. When the washing machine quits working, the belt, you know, if, if it just stops working right after closing, that's the buyer's problem. If it's before closing, seller's got to put it back in working condition. The one nice thing about neighbor uh, forms, uh, we have a form for the inspection process. The good old neighbor uh, inspection election and seller's response form uh, has to be filled out, needs to be filled out correctly. I could do a whole class on filling that out correctly so that you don't select, select cosmetic items to be repaired. But um, we're gonna talk more about that in a few minutes. So the seller is required to make a diligent effort to complete the remedial action. That's the standard, the diligent effort. If the seller does not make a diligent effort, they are in breach of contract. And if they don't complete the repairs, of course, we know with all the supply challenges from the pandemic and everything else, um, if they don't complete the repairs, then there's going to be an escrow of 200% at closing on the settlement statement. Uh, one discrepancy in the, uh, or one uh, issue in the neighbor contract is there's no procedure when the seller doesn't agree that something is defective. Uh, and we're gonna talk about major versus minor cracks. What is a little crack? What is a major crack? What is a structural issue? Uh, you may need to be hiring engineers and proving your case because the neighbor contract does not have a procedure for uh, when there's discrepancies between the buyer and seller's findings. I will say this about that. If the seller just says, I'm not fixing that, it's fine. That's probably not good enough. We probably need the seller to get an expert to come in on their own side and argue back and forth. Um, so the seller in the neighbor contract is not required to re repair or replace torn screens, minor window cracks or cracked roof tiles. Um, you're gonna see that, that that's gonna be a difference from far bar and that can be a big deal, especially when you got those barrel tile roofs, uh, you can have an issue there. We have some questions in the chat. What happens when the buyer's agent refuses to present an estimate for repairs, but sends a buyer election with an unreasonable credit amount? Isabel, that's a great question. For those of you that can see Isabel's question in the chat, what happens when, and, and I'm gonna do this under NABOR, uh, when the, the inspection election comes over with no uh, report attached or um, no estimates, which are required by the contract, my view and a view of a lot of attorneys in the area is that's a breach of contract. Um, that is that is the buyer not following the strict uh, controls in the contract for how to handle inspections. And I would send it back to the buyer with a response that you have breached the contract by failing to, to provide estimates while asking for a credit, please provide your estimates. And if they're outside their time period because they waited too long, I would go to the next step in the contract that says the buyer takes as is. 
that's a very harsh response. And of course, there's always room for negotiation. But when you've got a, a, a party that's not following the contract, a buyer making unreasonable requests, then you, you've got to be prepared to go back to them. Um, <laughs> Lori is asking, why does Nabor not mirror Farbar? Because Nabor makes a better contract. <laughs> in, some, in some cases, as we're going to talk about today. So um, let's talk about the contracts. Sell, what is the seller required to repair or replace? Well, the contracts require that certain systems and equipment be in working condition. If the system and equipment do not pass the inspection, then there's an obligation for them to be brought into working condition. Um, there are, other, and this is neighbor, what other conditions on the property are considered to be cosmetic and the seller may not be required to own it. And then there's what must be in working condition and what is cosmetic depends on the form, as we've said. So working condition or cosmetic condition, Working condition means that the systems and equipment are operating in the manner in which the item is designed to operate. So you may need to bring in an engineer if it's, or you may need to bring in an expert for a specific issue. And they may tell you, well, this air conditioner is supposed to be doing this, or this washing machine is supposed to be doing that. Typically your, your home inspector can figure that out for you. But you, you may, if you have a leaking roof, as we all know, you know the the inspector is going to say get further inspected by a, by a licensed roof roof contractor, or uh, bring in an HVAC specialist. This is not properly cooling. Uh, sellers are not required to repair cosmetic conditions, of course, which generally can be defined as aesthetic imperfections which do not affect the working condition of an item. So aesthetic imperfections, and we're we'll talk. I'm going to show you all all what the contract lays out, but you know minor minor issues, tears, scratches, uh, dents, dings, nail holes. Um, Jackie's asking me a question. No, no, Jackie. This the the bar bar has ten days to make repairs or give the buyer the notice, uh, the written notice can be the inspection report only, and they can ask the seller to fix all, but the seller's only gonna be obligated to fix the, the, the defective items. So let's talk about working condition in FAR bar. What the, they must, the items must be maintained in working condition, free of leaks, water damage, and structural damage. That's the standard. The ceiling, the roof, the walls, the doors, the windows, the foundation must be free of leaks, water damage, and structural damage. So that's that's like uh, obviously an air conditioner is a mechanical component, a washing machine is a mechanical component. They have to be do their jobs. Well, the ceiling's job is to protect from the rain and the sun and uh, not leak. So, or sorry, the roof's job. So those. That, this is the standard for the ceiling, the roof, the exterior walls, the doors, the windows, and the foundation. Systems and equipment that have to be maintained in working condition include the pool equipment, non-leased major appliances. So if you have a leased appliance that doesn't work, first of all, that appliance is going to be rem probably removed at closing. If it's not, um, it, it's not going to be part of the inspection process. And in the neighbor contract, they actually say non-leased major appliances are part of the granting clause at the beginning of the contract. Other items, obviously your heating and cooling systems, your electrical, your security, your sprinkler systems, if you've got it, septic, plumbing, all have to be working well. Seawalls and dockage have to be in working condition. So the lift has to work. That's a new one that's added to the neighbor as well. Um, what must be rep re repaired or replaced? I said this, torn screens, including the pool and patio screens, fogged windows, missing roofs, roof tiles or shingles. Um, again, different from neighbor. What is cosmetic under far bar? What, so the seller would not be required to repair or replace it. Pitted marsite, that's your pool. Tears, worn spots, discolorations. 
in the in the uh, the floor coverings, uh, wallpaper, window treatments. Big one here, nail holes. A lot of people will say uh, this. What is what is too big of a nail hole? When is it when is it more than a nail hole? When they remove, for example, those TV brackets that they're not supposed to remove, and they leave a big mess. I can tell you personal experience in when I purchased my home, they took the television off the wall, they took the bracket off the wall, and they left a hole, you can see on the screen, about that big in the wall, and I had to go back to my seller and explain to them that was a problem. I mentioned this before at the beginning, minor cracks in our cosmetic. Well, minor versus major is not defined. My my definition, the, the Sam Saad definition is if it's structural, it's clearly major. Uh, I've seen other people argue, well, it's more than a half an inch, it's major. Honestly, I would go back to the definition, the, the engineer and say, an engineer and say, is this structural or not? Um, that's really what I think of. If, if, if there's a minor crack in the floor tile, uh, or a, a big crack in the floor tile, it may pretend that there's a foundational issue and I would wanna get that inspected. And if there is a foundational issue that we noticed from the floor tile cracking, then obviously we've got a problem. We go back to the other, the other um, um, structural damage, including, including everything here. So um, cracked roof tiles, Cosmetic, curling or worn shingles, so long as there's no evidence of actual leakage. This is another standard in the contract. If your roof top, if your roof is, is limited in roof life, but if there are no leaks, leakage, or structural damage, you don't have to replace the roof. And I'll point out, I looked this up on dictionary.com, leaks and leakage mean the same thing. So if it's not leaking it's not, and it's structurally sound, you don't have to fix old roofs. Neighbor, um, what must be in working condition, again, means structurally sound, watertight, and free from wood rot. Uh, the roof, the ceiling, the interior and exterior doors and walls, the foundation, the, the pool, the spa, the decking. Again, the standard in Neighbor, it has to be structurally sound and watertight and free from wood rot. So we want to make sure that it's, it's very similar. They, they say leakage and free from leaks. Um, but it's free, as, long as, it's, as long as it's not leaking, then you're okay. We have a question. What happens when the insurance company will not insure a roof over 10 years old? Bob, that's a great question. And it actually falls into a different provision of the contract. If you can't get insurance, then you can terminate the contract. David, wood rot is not covered in bar bar. Um, what has to be structurally sound under neighbor? Your seawalls, your docks, your pool, your lanai enclosures are all included in that. Um, the seller is not required to repair or replace the items listed here. Corrosions, so that this comes up around water heaters. Uh, it says corrosion in the contract without context, and it's uh, when you get the um, the green corroded looking um, uh, on the copper pipes on your water heater, does that have to be fixed? Well, according to the neighbor, it does not, as long as it's not leaking. If your, if your water heater is in working condition, corrosion uh, around the pipes is not something that's actionable under the neighbor contract. Again, they talk about minor cracks in windows, driveway, sidewalks, pools, and, and the like. And uh, what is minor? Again, without a definition in the neighbor contract, this is um, something that I've had to fight about a few times. Where again, the, the buyer said, "Well, it's more than more than a half an inch, so it's a major crack." But we couldn't they couldn't provide any structural um, evidence of structural damage, and we said it was a minor crack. Uh, and of course, we had to, we set, we settled that one, and that's that's really one of the issues is you're gonna to have to work together on a lot of these issues. And we settled that out and uh, it was a small credit that the seller gave to make the buyer feel good about themselves. If it had been a foundational issue, the small credit would not have helped. So it kind of becomes a, what's a major, what's a major crack kind of becomes a hammer for the, uh, for the buyer. Okay. Um, 
Kelly, I believe if I have to double check this, but you're asking how long you can cancel if you can't get insurance. I believe it's all the way up to closing. Um, Valentina in the far bar, I don't know the exact line number, but it's, it's section 9A is 1.5% of the purchase price. And that is a default setting. Remember, you can change that. Okay, moving right along. Oops. Um, that was a lot faster than I thought. <laughs> okay, what questions do people have? Cosme corrosion is cosmetic under Farbardale. Other questions? Let's see, Lisa is asking, what about a roof that is 33 years old? Lisa, if a roof is over 33, year, is 33 years old, but it's structurally sound and watertight under NABOR, there's no action that the seller has to take. If it's free from leaks and structurally sound under FARBAR, there's no action the seller has to take. Um, and you all can, you can unmute yourself and shout your questions out if you want to. Um, Bob, permits are covered in a different presentation, but permitting basically under uh, the permits have to be closed out if they're, or the, the seller under Farber has the right to terminate under NABOR, there's a, there is, a, there is a, um, an escrow. Other questions, anybody? Let's see, does the, term, does the termination, if you cannot get insurance, apply to Farber and NABOR? North contract. I think you mean Farbar or neighbor contracts. And yes, Dita, that's both. Uh, well, Sam, um, yes, uh, uh, regarding your roof, uh, in the disclosure statement or during conversations, they suggest the roof is 20 years old and you learn that it's 35. What um, position can you take with that? Well, again, the issue is not the age. The issue is the structural integrity of the roof and whether it's free from leaks and leakage. So you, you could have a hundred year old roof, it may just be the greatest roof ever, ever built. If it's free from leaks and structurally sound, then the seller's not gonna be obligated to fix it. Now- Regar Regardless of how they represented the roof to well, me. Well, then you get into a possible, um, it says, let me say, the, the, uh, give it a little more detail to the example. If say you go to closing and you've closed and the, then the buyer finds out after closing that the roof is much older, you know, they say, well, Johnson B. Davis, you remember, says that the, buy, the seller will disclose all known latent defects, but there's no defect. So even though they misrepresented the age of the roof, the roof is not defective. It's just old. And I think I don't I don't see a court saying they would unwind the transaction or give the buyer damages just because the 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 uh, age of the roof was mis misrepresented. And the only reason I say that is because the contract contains standards for what the, the for the condition the roof has to be in. Okay, I'm getting a lot of chat questions too, so I'm gonna try and catch up couple of questions about polybutylene and challenger panels. So again, if you go back to what has to be fixed in your contract and what is what is cosmetic, working condition, um, if it's free, if it's not, if the polybutylene pipes are not leaking, then you um, don't have to fix them. And I know that's very frustrating. I know inspectors uh, like to point out PVP. Uh, I know they like to point out challenger panels, uh, aluminum wiring versus copper wiring for electrical. These are, these are issues that we deal with all the time in my office. And if it's operating in the manner in which it was designed to operate, then you don't have it, you don't have, a, a buyer does not have a, a complaint because they don't like the materials. I mean, we know it comes up a lot uh, or does not come up a lot, but it's another issue. There's two kinds of PEX plumbing, the old PEX and the new PEX. The, and the old PEX plumbing leaks worse than polybutylene. So if it's not, but if it's not leaking, you can't, the buyer can't force the seller to fix it. 
So that's the frustration. The same with the challenger panels. If they're not arcing and sparking and they're everything else, then uh, you can't force them to be, to be replaced. I mean, now I've got an interesting situation. I'm not 100% certain that challenger panels are even allowed anymore, but um, I have an interesting situation where we've got a challenger panel, it's got a double tap. They put two, two connections into one breaker. And so we're arguing that the challenger panel can't be replaced. It's got to be replaced by a, by a different panel. Mike is asking the same thing. A double tapped wire has to be fixed. That's, that's a code violation. Okay. Um, let me go through the chat. A lot of questions came up. Um, what about security systems that were installed by the developer that have never been activated by the owners? Um, funny you would ask that question about developers. I have a security system that was not activated by the prior seller, by my seller. And um, again, it, it's, if, it's the, if the security system is in working condition, it means it could be turned on and it could work fine, then I don't see where the buyer can force the seller to activate it. There is one line in, in the neighbor contract that says that the, the seller will make the property available uh, for inspections. But if you've never turned on your security system, I think you'd be hard pressed to force a seller to figure out how to use the security system when, they, when they've never used it. Um, Isabel, there are insurance companies that will insure Challenger and Polybutylene. You're gonna pay more, no question. If you've got Polybutylene, you'll pay more for insurance, but there are insurance companies that will insure Poly, and so you're kind of stuck with it. Other questions? You don't need yourself. All right, with that. I, I do oh, have a question. I'm too late. <clears throat> so if, uh, if the defective item was put on a seller's disclosure, does it still need to be repaired? That's a great question. And again, I talk about that in, in, in much more detail in my um, contracts class, my, my, my full contract class. But under the neighbor contract, the anything that the seller puts on the disclo seller's disclosure that the and the and the buyer signs the seller's disclosure prior to making the offer then the seller would not have to repair that in the re during the uh, during the inspection process and the reason is the uh, the uh, the the contract assumes that the buyer took into consideration all of the known defects when they made their offer does that, I don't know if that makes sense or not, but if, if the buyer, for example, knows the pool is leaking, knows it's going to be $10,000 to repair the pool, then they should put a, make an offer that's $10,000 lower than they otherwise might have because they've got to spend the money on the pool. Now, you and I know that's very strange and difficult to explain to the other side when you're making a lowball offer, but that's the way the contract is written. Under the Farbar contract, there is not a, uh, we'll call it a, a waiver of, a, of a inspection rights by signing off on a seller's disclosure. So that's not an, not an issue in the far bar. Vicky's asking when you say before the offer, how about with the offer? Uh, Vicky, it actually says in the contract prior to, prior to the offer. So if, uh, what, what I suggest, if if sellers have got a really big seller's disclosure and, there's, and there are issues um, with the property, you know, you're selling a less than premium property, for example, then I would um, put my seller's disclosure in the MLS and in the confidential remarks on my listing, I'm going to say, seller will not accept offers unless the buyer submits a, a previously signed seller's disclosure form or something like that. You know, um, I would not- Does it need to be like a day before the offer or can it be on the same day as the offer comes in? 
I have actually had this case as well, Valentina. And what happened was we used electronic signatures and I had my, and I told the, the, the selling agent, the buyer's agent, I said, make sure your seller signs this disclosure prior to making the offer. So when you do your electronic signatures, and this is how close we were, I had them put the seller's disclosure in, in the uh, DocuSign first, and, and it was all one DocuSign, and the contract came second. So I could show that the buyer did see the seller's disclosure, did sign the seller's disclosure, you know, 30 seconds before they signed the contract to comply with the contract's terms. So, so that, that's how I would do that. I would just make sure it can be it can be one minute or 30 seconds before, but just make sure that the seller has signed or the buyer has signed the seller's disclosure prior to making their offer. Um, uh, and when you use, of course, the docu signs and the and these form simplicities and your other your your, your hello your other signing programs, it's it's date and time stamp, so you could do it the same day and prove that it was that the the disclosure was signed first. Susie is asking about uh, fog windows covered under neighbor. Um, May I have Mr. Answer, but neighbor or fog windows, the fog windows are questionable under neighbor. Uh, it does not specifically say, um, where is it? Bar bar requires fog windows. Neighbor does not is not clear. That's that's how I'll answer that question. <laughs> Neighbor, if it, it I I have taken the position when I have the buyer that a fog window means that the the window is not operating as it was designed to operate, but I'm not. It's not entirely clear that that's the standard. If it's structural soundness and free from leaks, then if the window is structurally sound and free from leaks, even though it's fog. I would say the most important thing is to when you see those fogged windows, or if you're discuss them with the with the listing agent, or if you're the listing agent and your property has fogged windows, get them on the seller's disclosure and have that seller's disclosure signed so it's not a question. Um, Vicky, you asked, did you say it was the same for Farbar? But I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, seller's disclosure. No, it's not the same. Sorry. Uh, yes, Cynthia, I'll be sending out the PowerPoint and the video in a few hours. Deborah, the seller's disclosure under FARBAR is um, uh, just according to state law, the Johnson v. Davis test. Seller has to disclose known latent defects that materially affect the value of the property. It does not, that disclosure, however, does not affect the seller's obligation to make repairs. So if the, the seller can disclose, disclose, disclose all they want under FARBAR, if it's not in working condition, if it's leaking, if it's structurally unsound, seller's got to fix it. Inspection defects, which are H Mike, this is a great question. Inspection defects, which are HOA or condo association responsibilities, how does the seller handle these properly? Uh, we have added to the neighbor contract that if you have an HOA uh, um, or like a, let's, let's think, what's a good example? Leaking roof in a condominium. Roof is clearly a, a common element, not specific to the unit. The neighbor and the far bar contracts define the, the property as the unit being sold. So you would, you would have to defer to the uh, association um, if there was if there was a, an association problem like a leaking roof or a downed tree, you've seen that in HOAs, uh, where with the HOA owned the tree along the street, um, and the uh, the buyer wanted it repaired, but the seller couldn't do anything about it because it was an HOA issue. Yes, Tina. Would you have a question? <laughs> yeah, I thought I typed it. Um, anyway, going back to the fog windows. Yeah. I was told with the inspectors that the fog is created because the window seal 
had penetrated water to the between window glass and the seal. So if that's the case, it is a leaking issue. I would agree with that completely. If you've got, if you've got uh, an inspector saying that there is leakage coming through the window, um, yes. I would say that is definitely a, a defective item under both right. contracts. Right, and that creates the fog in the window. So that's the thing I was trying to share. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. No, that's a great point. If you've got a, if you've got clear evidence of water coming through, then you've got a problem that, that needs to be remedied by the seller. Vicki, you have your hand up, go ahead. Um, I just, uh, let me make sure I'm unmuted. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify on that seller's disclosure situation. Did sure. I hear you correctly that on NABOR, if it's presented ahead of time, even if it's 10 minutes ahead of time, but it's signed and presented ahead of time, then those items do not need to be fixed. But on far bar, they do. Is that? that that's correct. Okay. The neighbor contract, if you look at the first line of standard D of the neighbor contract, you'll see where it says, except as to items, um, I, don't, I don't have the exact language memorized, but except as to items disclosed by the seller prior to buyer making the offer. Then those are, and that, that language does not exist in FAR bar. So the FAR bar contract would require, would, would, there would not be an exemption in FAR bar for a disclosure. But you could maybe add that language to the FAR bar if you wanted it to be that way. If I had that kind of power, I would do it. <laughs> no, I mean, like if you're writing the contract. Oh, yeah. If you are, if you are, if you wanted to add additional terms to the, to the FAR bar contract, you could, you could say something along the lines of, uh, seller has provided a seller's disclosure to buyer and buyer agrees that seller will not be obligated to repair items previously disclosed on the seller's disclosure. So we can okay, we, call me, we'll, we'll craft some language, but that is that is a certainly an option. You could add that to Farmar. Thank you. Brooke is asking, is it okay for the buyer to ask for the seller to repair cosmetic or near end of life equipment? Brooke, my default is even when I have the buyer is to say no to that question. Uh, it's my opinion that if, if the buyer, and this is my opinion, I don't, the, the courts have not ruled on this. I could be completely wrong. Um, if the buyer makes an improper inspection, it's my opinion that they are in breach because the contract, the plain meaning of the contract and the courts always look to the plain meaning of the contract first. Um, the, the, the contract says what the standards are, what is to be repaired, inspected and repaired. And if you go back and say um, and demand that torn shingles or curling shingles be repaired um, and you refuse to perform as a buyer because the seller, you try to terminate as, as the buyer because the seller refuses to fix the torn and curling shingles then you buyer have breached the contract. So I, I would tell sellers to reject those unless they are really want to make the repairs and spend the money. And I would tell buyers, don't ask for cosmetic items. You're going to create problems for yourself. And there's the possibility that you could be in breach of contract. Isabel is asking leaking windows or a cracked lanai on a balcony. Isabel, another great question. And then for that, you have to look to the condominiums declaration. Is this, is the window that's cracked the responsibility of the unit owner because it's a limited common element or does the association handle all the windows? Uh, and that's different by condominium. You'll typically see in the taller condominiums, the high rise towers, that the exterior of the building is handled by the, by the association. And in the older, smaller condos, limited common elements. Um, uh, for example, my, my folks have a condo uh, uh, on the beach and they have to replace their windows with uh, hurricane glass. And that's their issue, not the condo board's issue, uh, even though, because the windows only um, benefit my parents' unit. Okay, other questions? 
We've got one more minute. All right. I'm not seeing anybody putting in the chat. Anybody want to unmute themselves and shout it out? All right, with that. Thank you all very much for your time today. My contact information is here. And um, you can call, text, email, smoke signals. If you have any questions anytime, just let me know. I'm happy to help. I love helping everybody. And um, I will get the slides and the video out in a few hours. Thank you all very much.